Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 526, is it? Yes, 526. Hmm. So, I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and we have some news for you this week. So, let's hop right into it. <clears throat> so, another My Little Pony Fun Run, a hit. Oh, sorry, My Little Pony Fun Run hits to Malaysia for the 40th anniversary. Yay! So Malaysia is once again running a My Little Pony run, uh, fun run. Wow, that trip. Uh, complete with the usual uh, flood of merchandise em, uh, emblazoned with its 40th anniversary logo uh, you see above, which is there. Oh no, hand doesn't go there. <laughs> so, um... The design includes options from old gen G4 and G5, uh, depending on what you prefer. Uh, tickets are over here on the links. So I'm just going to hop right into it. <clears throat> so you have the uh, first design, which is they, they call Generation Retro. Uh, it is a G5, sorry, um, original generation pony. It's in, I think that's called teal, or it's kind of a green, but yes. So it's G5, sorry, original uh, Generation 1 team. Uh, the, the front is with the 40th anniversary logo, and the back has the original ponies, so yay. And also a string bag. Awesomeness. And... 5 kilometer rainbow run. Hmm, okay. So we... The next one is the generation 4, G4. So still 5 kilometer rainbow run. Uh, so you have... Uh, what they, they call this generation magic. <laughs> and uh, magical it is. So the front is the same logo. And the back is Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash. For this one, I got no idea who they are, I'm sorry. And you also have a string back of the main six. This one is their version of the main six because I see classic Applejack and a bunch of other ponies that I don't remember. My bad. So you have the main six on this one. And it looks like they're using the movie version of the uh, ponies. I remember Twilight, but I'm not 100% sure about the rest on from this angle. And the last one is... Um, it's Generation Sparkle. I don't know why they call it that. So you have the string bags. You have Easy and Sunny. And you have the logo. And I'm just noticing all the logos are not the same. Um, for the original G1, you have the rainbow. Uh, G4, you have some kind of rainbow road going to the shirt. And the last one is some kind of string, which is kind of cool. Uh, the size guide, the participation medal, finisher medal, uh, actual finisher medal. So uh, what they want you to do is just not really run, but just participate and finish the race. And you'll get a medal, which is cool. And what else? Yeah, you can also get some other cool things along the way. So, let's see. Uh, more fun for everyone. Entry free. Carnival tickets and so, 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 and so on. So on and so on. Okay, so here's the big one. Um, so, okay. Early bird tickets cost you about 60 ringgit. Uh, and if, is you, if you just buy it normally, it's an additional 15 ringgit. Uh, a a ringgit to American dollar conversion would be about 4.4. So that's one ringgit is multiplied to 4.4. So a dollar is about $4.44. Sorry, divided, not multiplied, divided. So uh, I'll say this. A dollar is about four dollars and forty-four cents. Sorry, ringgit. And fifty ringgit for the early bird and blah blah blah, so on. 
So this looks fun and if I remember there's two events. One for December and one for January and happening at two different locations. So um the big question on everybody's mind is will I participate in this? So <clears throat> I'm thinking about it really hard. I've thought about it, and this is one of those events where I should participate. But at the same time, too, it's going to be a bit strange for a grown ass man to be running in a kids' event without any kids running along with them. So, this is one of those things where I may have to use my nephews as leverage for this one. I've asked their mothers. And she's cool with it, I guess. But what time is it? That's the thing. What time is it? Um, I may need to check the time. But you know, I I probably will because this is one of those things where, hey, I I do this show. Um, this is no stop. <laughs> uh, I do this show, and this is kind of my thing, and. Probably I will, and even if I can't get my、uh, nephews to join in, I'll probably do it on my own. And okay, ninth of December, cool, cool, cool. I buy tickets. Hmm, there's a lot of run and hunt. Hmm, a lot of stuff. But let's see. Um. I I will be doing the run, so let let's see the options. Hello, internet, could you please? Yes. Uh, event location. Okay, ref. No, I got none. Um. Oh, one. Okay, so ah, I missed the early bird, um, thing. Oh yes, I could pick the thing. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Blood type. Hmm. Why do you need that? So yeah. Um. I I guess there it is. But I'm trying to see what time does the thing start. It is this one of those mystery things where I need to do the whole signing thing and get the time. That is. That is very very strange. Um, no time, really. I know there's a date, but there's no time. I'm sorry. I I'm just trying to find the time for this event. You know what? <clears throat> I'll probably do that later. So this is cool. This is a very fun event. Um, might need to put on my. Running shoes and try to find my jogging pants and have a good time. So yeah, this is gonna be fun. I'm I'm not gonna run through dashing through the、um, kids and whatnot. I'll probably just walk around and just have fun, you know. So moving on to the next news. Ah,、uh, Renegade Games reveal another dark side of Equestria page preview page. New perks for your changelings. Following the reveal of Changelings, Renegade is showing off a bunch of new perks to go along with them for your Dark Skies of Equestria adventures. The page above details what you can expect to be able to do with your Buck Horse characters. So let's check it out because、um, there was a lot of speculation I did before. So now we get to go in and see what they do, and I'll. Give you a brief rundown of my opinions from a RPG, a TTRPG player. All right,、uh, new general perks. General perks help your character stand out, unlocking new abilities and bonuses. You can choose from the following new general perks whenever you gain a new one. A new one, even though they were written with changing in mind, every character can. Take any general perk they meet the prerequisite for. Keep in mind that a character needs to meet the prerequisite for a general perk 
in their normal form. While shape-shifting, a character borrows abilities, but general perks serve as an all-in-time all benefit, even if they only apply to a specific action like shape-shifting. Oh, okay, that's cool. That, that is very cool. All right. Um. So what this means is, uh, your character. Let's just say, a change thing for argument's sake, is a Earth Pony, uh, changeling. Um, his original form is an Earth Pony. He feels comfortable in it, and he gets one of the many perks they are, and we're gonna go through them, and I I can properly. <clears throat> Um, see what they are. So camouflage, camouflage height. The way your colors blend into the background, you, your, your, uh, hmm, your height was made for hide. Ha ha ha! Ah puns. Uh, was made for hiding. This might be due to the ability to shape shift, but you might just have the right colors. Or, and patterns in your height naturally. As a free action, you can give yourself the edge on an infiltration skill test. Ah, okay, cool, cool. So what this means is, let's just say that your OC or your pony character is dark blue and <clears throat> is the knight and you're hiding in the forest. Let's just say you use the free action to do infiltrate. So you do the roll and you probably do it at advantage because your dark blue pony matches with the background if there's no source of sources of light. So you roll, you roll with advantage, you get a high roll and you're all good. So that's how I'm interpreting it and that's cool. If you're a changeling, you can just basically change the colors. Alright, cool, 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 cool. <clears throat> Face shift, prerequisite. Oh, there's a prerequisite on this one. Ability to change shape, such as uh, the changeling shape shift, original perk, or the po pony, pony morph spell, coral book. Okay, so you need to have those too. When you change your shape, you can choose to take the shape of an individual instead of the general look of a type of creature. In change the shape of an individual. Uh, you gain edge on skill test to pass as that individual and one uh, up one on a skill that individual is known to be good at choose your um, choose when you shape shift. Ah, okay. Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna read this. When you change your shape, you can choose to take the shape of an individual instead of the general. Ah, I see. <clears throat> so what this says to me is that okay, let's just say. You're a changeling, and you want to change into Applejack. You can do the roll, and sorry, um, okay. So, uh, the original shape shift, uh, perk, change shape shift origin perk in the book and the poly pony morph spell in the coral book states that you can change into a certain type of pony instead of a specific type of pony. Uh, in this case, I want to change into a Pegasi. So you do the spell or you cast the action and you change into a Pegasi. Um, it could be a random Pegasi, but nothing specific. Um, you, you can't be Fluttershy or Rainbow Dash. But with the face shift, uh, perk, you get to be, uh, you can change into, uh, Fluttershy or Rainbow Dash. 
Uh, this also applies to the Ponymorph spell. That is very cool. That is very cool. So identity crisis. What does this do? When you pretend to be another creature, you use in suing uh, you use in suing confusion on to your advantage. You gain an edge on skill tests targeting creatures who believe you are some creature else. Like if you trick them with deception or you change your shape. This lasts for as long as they completely believe your impersonation. Okay, so this one doesn't have any prerequisites, but this one is perfect for changing characters, obviously, but uh, characters who do impressions or pretend, like, I, I believe there's things like that. It's been a while since I read the original core rule book, but what this tells me is that um, say that your character wants to get into the back room of Sugar Cube Corner. Why? Because he wants to get a early treat for himself. Yay. So he can uh, disguise himself and say to Mr. Cake that Hello, Mr. Cake. I am the health inspector. I have come to see the back room. And when you do your skill test, you roll with Edge. I, I'm thinking, uh, I, I'm believing that Edge is the pony, uh, the renegade's pony term for advantage. Meaning you roll to die, you pick the highest. And if you win the role, um, you can go to the back room and he'll probably show you around, blah, 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 and you can do stuff. And this is kind of cool. This, this is kind of really cool. So, uh, okay. Oh, they have an example here. Cool, 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 cool. So, example. Queen Christmas changed her shape to look like Trixie when she shoves an unsuspecting starlight glimmer into a tar pit. She gains an edge on the skill test because Starlight believes Trixie would never shove her best friends into tar, but now Starlight has reason to uh, has reasons to suspect that this isn't actually Trixie before Queen Chrysalis can use uh, identity crisis again. She needs to convince she's uh, convince Starlight that she's really Trixie. So the same thing can apply with the uh, example I gave. Um, this pony character goes to Mr. Cake saying, I am the health inspector, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he believes uh, the character. Goes to the back room and the character says, Mr. Cake, I would like to try some of your meal to make sure that they're not um, in any health code violation. And Mr. Cake says, oh, I never heard of that before. Could you... I mean, you mean do stuff like tell me and and you probably need to tell Mr. Cake, yeah, this is true, this is a new rule. Mm. Yes, it's true. Mm. And if he believes you, you get to eat cake. Hey, it, it, that's the that's the fun example of instead of shoving starlight into a tar pit. Why would you do that? That's mean. <clears throat> Master Morph, because it will uh, ability to change shape such as changing shape shift origin perk or polymorph all right so you need to have that too <clears throat> uh, your, av uh, your advanced shape shifting ability lets you do more than create more convincing disguise when you change your shape you also gain a up to bonus to skill that the target is known for for example you might uh, change into a wolf and apply the bonus to all uh, altern uh, alternate uh, for the wolf's keen sense of smell. Ah, okay. So what this tells me is that uh, while changing shapes such as a wolf, you can get a plus two bonus to skill. So for example, um, you change your shape into a eagle. So you fly high. This is a 
example if you're trying to find uh where the mm, okay let's just say uh you're using this uh you 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 shape shift into an eagle or poly pony morph into a eagle and the goal is to find Zakura's hut in the Everfree Forest. You fly high, you kind of scout around the area just trying to find where the heck is Zakura's hut. So when your game master asks you to uh, roll perception, yeah, roll perception. I, I don't know if there's perception in the game, I'm just using the ND guys. So roll perception uh, using the eagle's uh, base perception. Uh, let's just say it's a five, so it's a plus five. To uh, sorry, it's a probably a. You know what? I'm just gonna flat say it's probably a twenty. I'm just saying numbers here. D don't don't quote me on this. So, um, the eagle's sense is a twenty, so that's a plus five. So you. You roll a d20, you do a plus 5, and then you do another plus 2 because of the Master Morph skill. So you let's just say you roll a 15. So a 15 plus 5, that's a 20 plus 2, so that's a 22. And your GM sets the difficulty at probably 18, saying that the for forest is thick with uh, trees and... Uh, it's getting late, so the difficulty level is probably a 17, and you need to hit a 17 and above. And like I mentioned before, you read, you hit a 22, and your GM says, Okay, congratulations, with your keen sense and for knowledge of the forest, you managed to uh, find Zakura's hut, and uh, you memorize it, and you go back to your friends, and so on, blah blah. So this one, Metamorphosis is cool. So Metamorphosis, prerequisite, colony changeling. So I think that's your background. Yeah, I think that's one of the backgrounds that you need to have. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, uh, after years of loyalty to your queen and your colony, you give it up and become loyal to yourself. Aha! You change into a... Metamorphosis, uh, metamorphosis changeling. You lose the colony changeling benefits of natural shapeshift and can choose two new metamorphosis changeling benefits. You also, uh, also you keep the infiltrated influence, but you should change its focus to something else. Ah, that's fascinating. So what this tells me is that uh, <clears throat> using the if you were a colony changeling before, you need to cancel that out and change into a uh, metamorph metamorphosis changeling. Uh, the exa the closest example for this one in my head that I can remember that. This being close is that uh, in D and D fifth ed, there's a paladin subclass called uh, the Oathbreaker Paladin. Uh, the gimmick for the Oathbreaker Paladin is your you are a paladin of something, and an event happened that make you break your oath to your De not um, patron or deity and <clears throat> you kind of switch it to the other thing uh, a good example is okay um, I am a paladin of good but throughout my journey I've done bad things I've done things that goes against the grain of my pay of my deity and one day, the deity says to me, uh, Sorry, Bob, the paladin, your 
you're not my champion anymore since you did you didn't do the things I asked you to do. Now you're fired. Oh no. And as a result you become an oathbreaker paladin and you can technically pick a different deity to kind of roleplay your character. But in all essence, um but sorry, in all actuality what it does is just you pick a subclass, that subclass has certain rules to the character and you can uh, <clears throat> uh, roleplay it that way. But with ponies here, from what I understand, you need to get the colony changeling first, then you can change it to your to, to metamorphosis. So what I'm guessing here is um, Yeah, so what I'm guessing here is um Sorry, um, I'll just give a example with D and D, then relate to ponies here. So in D and D, uh, at level three, you pick a subclass. Uh, your subclass could be whatever it is, but like I mentioned before, the most important key point is the Oathbreaker Paladin. Uh, what that means is that I just get more stuff from this list. It doesn't mean that oh, you were a um. Paladin of Tear, you, you can just say it in your bio, but it doesn't mean that you get all the powers or and benefits that you get there. Um, most of those things come in at level 3. But with this one, from what I'm understanding is that you get most of your starting changing stuff there, but once you pick the Metamorphosis uh, perks, you lose all of that. Not really, you, you don't lose all of that, but you need to change it into something else. So it's, I, I see the similarities here, but I don't really recognize the action or how it's done. So this is really cool. So th it gives you a lot of role play functions. <clears throat> uh, some of the stuff that you can use without being a changeling is the camouflage hide, uh, hide and identity crisis. Uh, and yeah. This this two um sorry these two perks are pretty cool for what your game is all about. Uh, also, have uh, have a chat with your the game master so you don't kind of pick something that will never be used at all. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is, you pick the camera flash hide, and you're playing in a campaign. Your you're a white pegasi with blonde manes. And you're stuck in town. You're basically not gonna be playing. You're basically not gonna get camo use camouflage height that much. Uh, Identity Crisis is another one where, yes, you can uh, disguise yourself and whatnot, but if your party is gun ho dungeon crawl, uh, do a lot of fighting instead of talking, that's just going to be wasted. So let's move on to the next news because I think it's related. Really good games revealed under the dark sky over a quest preview page. Changeling continued. Okay, dark skies reveal continues. Uh, this one covers a few unique changeling traits and... Uh, racial perks to follow. Okay, yay, let's go. <clears throat> okay, we got outsiders, perks, hangups, uh, suggested characteristics. Okay, cool. Um, mm, I forgot how this works. But anyway, uh, when you spend time with other character uh, creatures, you're usually one of a kind in that crowd. Uh, influential skills, culture, example. Spike. Spike spends most, uh, so much time with Earth Ponies, Pegasus, and Unicorn, he used to say every pony instead of every creature, even when he was including himself. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. This tells, this tells us that, okay, uh, you, mm, this also depends on how the world works, so, uh, every Pony instead of every creature works well in this example. Uh, probably, okay. Uh, you live 
Your your character lives in Manhattan for all. I'm sorry, Manhattan for uh, all its life, and been stationed there all his life. So he picks up on a lot of um, Manhattan habits, going out wearing a hat, probably a vest, some kind of clothing article. Then when he's he moves to Ponyville for a job or something like that, he noticed. Oh no. Why are these ponies not wearing any clothes? I'm very uncomfortable with this. I need to wear clothes. Oh no. <laughs> so there's a good example for that too. I'm not sure if it's a good example or a bad example, but it's an example. And okay. <clears throat> uh, perk. Different perspective. You notice details about other cultures that they don't realize are unusual when interacting with those from a different culture, you gain up one on smarts and social skills. A social skill test. If your cultural skill is equal to or higher than your skill you're rolling. This also comes back uh, to the example I gave where, yes, um, you can technically ask Rarity. Um, you can ask her, um, Rarity? If, if you don't mind me asking, why are the citizens of Ponyville, uh, why do most of the citizens of Ponyville don't wear some kind of article of clothing? And you can roll the die, hit the number, and probably you get some insight on why. <laughs> so th that's, that's another example. Hang up. <laughs> A creature apart. You spend a lot of time with other types of creatures, but not your own. You suffer a snack on culture skill test related to your own type of creatures. So this is a example of, okay, cool. You, you're a changing pony from Manhattan moving on to Ponyville. You ask Rarity about stuff, and then you hang out with another pony and turns out to be a changeling and you sit together talking in changeling language and you're confused wait what um that's against protocol oh wait uh i'm supposed to no do do i'm i'm very confused oh um that's that's poor etiquette oh no so this is also depends on what the book says and what your GM wants to roleplay with. And also maybe we heard the characters, who knows. A good example of this for D&D &D is having your character from Faerun, which is the main part of the uh, Forgotten Realms adventure, going to the other side of the world uh, in Karatur. Uh, character setting is usually in the Southeast Asia, uh, sorry, in the Asia part of the world, in our world, uh, usually Japan, China, and so on. So you can probably have that there, uh, having those characters kind of have difference in, mm, how to say, have difference in uh, culture and whatnot. So uh, uh, technically, if you're an American, you come to Asia and you go to a person's house. Uh, the, one of the few rules is uh, when you, before entering a person's house, you're supposed to take off your shoes. Uh, why? Because uh, cleanliness. You walk outside, you got no idea what you step on, and also you drag around a lot of dirt. So before entering a person's house, you take off your shoes and put them outside uh, and uh, enter before uh, you, you do, do you do better that you do those things before entering uh, with Americans I believe you can but I think it's frowned upon I I, I don't know I, I I don't know how it works I I see a lot of TVs and that's how it works so I'm just um, influenced in that way <clears throat> so uh, this is the same thing too so yay suggested characteristics cool this is fun being an outsider usually comes down to where you fit in. 
Spike may have been the only dragon in Ponyville until Amber enrolled. Amber. Amber. I thought her name was. Oh God, I forgot. I know it's not Amber. Um. It's a it's a play on fire. But what was it again? Oh god, I need to open the wiki. Ooh. I I I didn't do this last time for the change thing, but I have to do this uh for uh this one. Um there's Okay Dragon Let's see I am an adult Okay the spy Oh no Um, give me a second. Season two, season three, four, six, seven. Um. Oh no! Why? Why? Why is this? Uh. God. Why? Okay. Cool. So I found her name. Her name is Smolder. Oh, sorry, Smolder. Uh, so having Ember enroll at the school uh, is a bit strange because um, it's Dragon Lord Ember. Uh, remember the blue, blue dragon that calls Starlight Glimmer and and Twilight Sparkle the same ponies. That's her. Uh, Smolder is something else. I don't know why she would enroll. Anyway, uh, putting that aside, enroll at the School of Friendship. But he feels more like an outsider when he, uh, when he's around other dragons than when he's around with ponies. Ah, this makes sense. I like this a lot. I like this a lot. So what what do we have? The table, um, two or two three outside the background. So you roll a d12, or you can pick one of your own. I'm very good at problem solving, thanks to all the time I spent in uh, building and using uh, furniture designed for a very different body shape. Hmm. I worry that the creatures I spent the most time with see me as more of a novelty than a friend. Ah, that's very bad. I wonder if I should... You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for content. And it's fun to break things down. So, number one. Um, very good at problem solving. Okay, so the way I can see this playing out is that Ah, you, you're you a dragon. I'm just going for the dragon thing. And you, you spend a lot of time in Ponyville. I'm just going to use Spike as an example. And you kind of gotten used to the idea with sitting like how the ponies sit or more or less like how the ponies sit and just interacting with the world of how ponies work. And then when you go to a certain location which is kind of not pro-pony, let's just say you go to the Dragonlands and you see certain things that, huh, why are they not using doors? Like... Why are they not using certain things or doing this? Are doing things this way or doing things that way? Then, for example, you you see, uh, there's a dragon who has a hard time scratching its back, and needs to use um some kind of wall or ask another dragon to help them scratch their backs. But oh no, dragons are selfish, I guess, and they won't help. So Spike comes in saying. Hey, um, why don't you use this stick to scratch your back? And the dragon tries to use it and, oh, it works. So it's a different perspective from blah, 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 and so on. And <clears throat> number two, uh, worry, spending time, novelty. So this can go with the world where, yay, uh, I'm a griffin. Yay, I, I, am a, I am a cool griffin. But... I hang out with certain ponies that 
don't really see me as the friend, but more of a trophy and use that to attract people to come into them and so on and that feels bad number two is fun number two is a role play gimmick <clears throat> sometimes i number three sometimes i ask very personal questions without realizing it so this could be a tendency for uh, one of those spy characters or just busy bodies so um this, this one's just fun like a nice example is you just ask Rarity, Rarity, how old are you? Without even realizing it, because you just kind of are just curious and want to know. And Rarity is just aghast because oh, you never ask a lady for their age. Ha! Huh. Slap. <laughs> Number four, the more time I spend with creatures who are different from me, the less I fit in in where I'm from. Hmm, this is Spike all over again. Spike spends a majority of his life in Ponyville and around ponies. And when he hangs out with dragons, he feels awkward. He doesn't even know, know uh, some of the basic like molting, uh, what molting is. Uh, he doesn't have any dragon uh, instincts and so on. So th that, that is fun. Ro role playing with number four is also fun. <clears throat> Number five, is it okay to have romantic feelings about a different type of creatures? This one is, hmm, uh, hmm, role-playing again. This one is role-playing material. This is going to be fun. But depending on how your GM wants to play, uh, they could have just said, okay, guys, I, I know number five is cool, but could we not? Because I don't want to get into this. But number five is fun, depending on your GM. Uh, number six, I have a very special pen pal that I never met, but I think they've, they're, but I think they're my best friend. Oof, another role playing thing. I, I'm I'm just guessing that these are just all role playing things because number six could be, aha, I I I have a friend in Manhattan. We write a lot and we kind of click but I don't know if we're really best friends if we meet in real life and I don't want to risk it I'm scared ah but they're my best friend so yay number seven after I chat with some cre uh, some creature new I s research anything they say that I didn't understand Huh, okay. Another person, sorry, another, um, I, I guess this is all role playing, but another trait that's very fun because you can have, um, this character who's like talking, 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 ah, yes, and then suddenly they pop into something that you, you don't really understand. And this doesn't really mean that it has to be something cultural, sorry, uh, something specific to a, um, creature type. Uh, probably griffins, hippogriff, dragons, and so on. Probably. It, it doesn't really have to relate to that, but it could just be something more general about baking a cake, um, carpentry, or even playing games. And your character's like, Ah, yes! Buckball! Yes! Fascinating! And you'll just go in to the library and just read all about bug balls and that could be fun. Another role playing thing. A role playing thing. And number eight, I don't like when others make my uh behavior. Sorry. I don't like when others make my behavior all about the type of creature I am. Ah yes. So this could be the ah uh, changing. Uh, sorry, dragons are all. Um, selfish and uh, doesn't don't like to share and as a dragon I find that offensive because you ponies can be selfish too that's not fair at all Grrr, and so on so yeah um, that role playing thing yeah number nine I'm very good at blending in 
uh, I don't know about this one. This is pretty simple. You, you can use it as a trade, probably give it a bonus. I, I don't know for this one. Number 10. Family is a choice and I choose mine. Uh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, number 11. <clears throat> it catches me off guard when another, sorry, others brings up what type of creature I am. Sometimes because I didn't think they saw me that way, and sometimes because I don't see myself that way. Probably Spike again because he sees himself as a pony most of the time, or he feels like a pony. He, did, he don't really think about it, but when asked about it, like, huh, I guess I am. Never thought about it that way. Hmm. Number 12. I notice that I speak, act, and even think differently depending on the type of creature I'm around. Huh. That's pretty cool. So, more or less, this, this table here kind of determines the character that you want to play as. And some of them are pretty cool. Some of them are kind of simple. Some of them are complex. And honestly, for this one, right, I say just roll. Roll a d12 and just roll with it. Because picking would be easier, but these are kind of um, characteristics that um, you want to have your, your, your character have. And this, they, they even say it's suggested so you can have your own thing. But the ones that they give are already good. Yeah. So, <coughs> um, I say for this one, just roll with it. And overall, the changing characters or the changing perk table, whatever it is, is really fun. So, yay. Moving on to the last news is... Sunny Star Scout float appears at Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yay! Uh, the annual Thanksgiving Day Parade in Philly apparently had a Sunny Star Scout floating on floating this year. Yay! Um, we've got a few images of that people capture from their TV. Uh, it's good to see some pony representation. This. Uh, representation the last time we had people send one in was way back in 2014 wow okay so <clears throat> there's a video i'm not gonna play the video because stuff so uh this is one of those things where i can't relate because i don't um, I, I, we don't have thanksgiving here in malaysia so i i don't I don't really uh, understand about the thing and whatnot, but this is cool. I I remember there's Sonics a while uh, while back, and there's a lot of other brands and so on. And this is cool having ponies there. Yeah, it's cool, and it looks a lot like. Mm. I'm sorry. Uh, it looks a lot like how. Uh, the show uh, is um. I think I'm trying to say it's show accurate. So yay, that's cool. Can't say much about this one, but this is cool. So let's move in to next topic. So next topic is what have I been doing with my week? Uh, mostly works and whatnot. Playing a bit of Dungeons and Dragons and also Magic the Gathering. Um, didn't really do anything significant, but I, I did catch a lot of animes because... I don't know, I, I'm on that anime kick now. And somehow, one of the interests that I have, or kind of perk my interest is Isekai. And there's a lot of Isekai I'm watching, and I notice a pattern that, huh, most of them have similar styles. They're, they're just the same show, but different. And yeah, I find them entertaining. Some are good, some are bad. And some didn't even pick my interest. Like the initial um, hook was pretty good, but after watching it, after doing the three episode testing, it just drops. Like yeah. So yeah, that, that's about it. So <clears throat> let's let's wrap things up. I can't believe I did 
almost 15 minutes. Wow. So anyway, uh, if you guys have any... <clears throat> so uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at Uh You can also reach us on the Twitter. So show's Twitter account is at NBS Show. My personal Twitter account is at Norma Sanzo. And also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also... Uh, subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast. Uh, links will be in the show notes. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. Uh, <clears throat> uh, patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to Review and Discussion Podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and myself, Black. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya!